Good evening to you. When your child goes back to school next week, a new law impacting each and every public school student will be in effect. That new law replaces one of the most significant and controversial education measure, measures in recent decades, the No Child Left Behind Act. It was signed here in the Tri-State in 2002, and at the time, it wasn't controversial at all. It was actually universally praised and admired. Local 12's Jeff Hirsch tells us what happened between then and now and what happens next. Hamilton High School, January 8, 2002, a special visitor for a special occasion. Thank you for such a warm welcome. It's great to be in the home of the Big Blue. <laughs> President George W. Bush came to Hamilton to sign the No Child Left Behind Act because Hamilton is in the district of then House Education Chair John Boehner. There was also another powerful political leader on hand, as noted by a reporter. Check out the glasses. One major theme today, bipartisanship. A Republican president, a very Republican-friendly crowd, gave a warm round of applause to the Democratic liberal Senator Ted Kennedy, who was very involved in getting this bill passed. No Child Left Behind promised more federal money, fewer federal strings, and tougher academic standards with annual high-stakes tests in reading and math. I understand taking tests aren't fun. Too bad. <laughs> we need to know in America. We need to know whether or not children have got the basic education. That was the intent. The reality was different. The unintended consequences is all the mandated testing at all the different grade levels and all the different subjects every year just became so overwhelming that parents have pushed back and just said it's too much. And teachers feel like it's really narrowed the curriculum. The testing mania. Teachers and principals could in theory lose their jobs under No Child Left Behind if test scores lagged, ultimately backfired. Too much testing, parents and teachers argued, meant less time for things like art, music, and physical education, important subjects in creating a well-rounded child. There's more to life than what critics called drill and kill tests in math and reading. I'm hoping the pendulum is starting to swing back and people are saying every child every year in all these subject areas is probably a little bit it is too much, and I think, um, I think the government has heard what the parents have said. And so, after years of political wrangling in December 2015, President Obama signed a replacement for No Child Left Behind, the Every Child Succeeds Act. The new law keeps some of No Child Left Behind, like focusing on how well minorities do, and there will still be annual testing. But the new law is supposed to have more flexibility for states and schools on how to test and how to improve schools which are not doing well. Plus, there are fewer federal do this or else unfunded mandates. We're hoping they really are serious and say our local boards of education at the local level and the local citizens truly understand what's happening locally and make the best decisions. I'm hopeful that we're moving in that direction. Of course, that was the hope behind No Child Left Behind as well. We want to make sure no child is left behind. Every child must learn to read. Easy to say, not easy to do. Jeff Hirsch, Local 12 News. The new law, Every Student Succeeds, authorizes about $25 billion in federal education spending in 2016. If that amount is actually spent, it's about $2 billion more than what was spent on No Child Left Behind in 2015. While multiple billions is sure a lot of money, most school funding comes from local taxpayers.